Hi guys, today's video is slightly different from my existing ones. This took a lot more effort to make but I believe it was worth it as I wanted to explore this topic in more detail and a video only tutorial wouldn't have been sufficient. Please subscribe to this channel and consider giving a like and sharing the video that would encourage me to attempt similar topics regarding AI in future. In December 2018, NVIDIA researchers released an AI model called StyleGAN, which was designed for producing an unlimited number of often convincing portraits of fake human faces and other similar tasks. The output was really impressive as most of the generated faces were indistinguishable from faces of real people. A website called This Person Does Not Exist uses this to generate a new face each time you visit it. Before we move on to the specifics of StyleGAN and its successor StyleGAN 2, let's explore the concept of GAN briefly. GANs, also known as Generative Adversarial Networks, were introduced in a 2014 paper to solve the task of generative modeling where the neural network attempts to learn an input distribution and then generate new samples which may not be exactly present in the original distribution. As indicated by the word adversarial, GANs are a pair of competing neural networks which train in step to defeat each other. The idea is something like this. Imagine an art forger who wants to create fake paintings of famous artists and seek to sell them as original. In this scenario, there is also an art inspector whose sole aim is to classify a painting as original or fake. For this purpose, the inspector diligently studies the difference between real and fake paintings and publishes an art bulletin in which the result of each new painting produced is published. Initially, the art forgerer has no idea how to create a convincing copy of an original painting, but he studies the art bulletin to see what paintings have been classified as fake and then tries to fix these mistakes in new copies. He is still unsuccessful for a number of times, but the quality of fake improves. Eventually, there comes a stage in which the art inspector is unable to clearly tell the difference between real and fake paintings, and our art forgerer is finally able to make some money from selling fakes. So in this game of cat and mouse, we can see that the art forgerer is using the feedback of art inspector to improve. The same concept applies to GANs. Here the forgerer is replaced by a neural network called generator and the inspector is called discriminator. This network classifies whether the samples generated by the generator are either real, one or fake, zero. During the training, the input to the generator network is a vector of random noise which is a single point in a mathematical distribution called latent space. As the generator improves in quality, it learns to map the original distribution to this latent space. Once the training is complete, each point of latent space is mapped to a sample in the original distribution. So if we were training on human faces, each latent vector could be mapped to a single face. Moving through the latent space allows us to interpolate between the different learned faces. In fact, it should be possible to find any possible human face in the latent space provided our training set has enough facial variety. After training, the discriminator network is usually discarded as its job is complete and the generator is used for future generation tasks. Since the generator network is not trained directly and learns on the feedback of the discriminator, GAN training falls under the category of unsupervised learning. Due to this indirect nature of training, GANs are harder to train compared to other neural networks. They often fail to learn useful characteristics of a domain or might learn only a subset of them. Historically, it has also been very hard to train GANs to produce high resolution outputs and thus for several years, they were limited to small image resolutions like 128 cross 128. Researchers came up with various approaches to fix these problems and with the advent of ProGAN and BigGAN, some of these problems were elevated. For example, progressive training allows the generator to first completely perfect itself at a lower resolution before moving on to higher resolution training. One major problem however still remained, the lack of control over the generator outputs. As the training is completely unsupervised, there is no way for us to tell the GAN which features to learn and to give priority. For example, if we desire any sort of control over the position of a generated face, 
hairstyle or any characteristic feature we don't have any simple mechanism of doing it through the starting input alone this is where stylegan and its successor stylegan 2 comes in stylegan is based on progressive training but one major change made to the generator design in stylegan paper was to introduce multiple inputs at different layers of the network instead of a single input at the start these individual inputs allow the generator to learn and map unique styles of the original distribution to individual generator layers for example the beginning layers of the generator may learn rough high level features such as head pose shape of the face skin color and so on later layers may learn the concept of fine features shape of the nose eyes extent of smile etc the concept of learning styles at different layers is quite powerful as we will see in a moment of course it needs to be mentioned that stylegan is not just limited to learning faces any image distribution can be learned provided enough samples are given to the network during training it was recently discovered that layers of two stylegan generators trained on two different domains can be combined together at intermediate layers leading to a hybrid generator which transforms from one domain to another this was used to create the tunification project where faces of real people can be made to look like characters from pixar movies i have added the link in the description of the website if you want to try out this for yourself we can explore this concept in more detail with other distributions for example when two stylegan generators trained on faces extracted from paintings and real faces are combined together we can transform paintings to real faces and vice versa this might allow us to visualize how the people in paintings might have looked like in real life or how an actual face can look like a painting As you can see for a 256 cross 256 style gan model we have the option of combining at resolutions 4 8 16 32 64 and 128 which means the starting layers of the model are provided by the first generator while the remaining layers are provided by the second generator This technique can be used to generate novel works of art as well The Japanese art of ukiyo-e is drawn in a certain style with faces always looking sideways We can then use stylegan to generate UQI faces in other poses. This seems very interesting and quite weird. We can also convert real faces to UQI style poses. It seems quite weird but quite fun. How about converting real faces to anime characters? It can be done to some extent as well. but due to differences between shapes of eyes and mouths in any main real faces the transformations are not perfect because there is no new learning involved artifacts such as this are to be expected if both domains are widely varying styles but slight style differences are not an issue Overall the technique shows a lot of promise and I am excited to see new innovation related to this. Hope you guys are fun watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.